Hey there. Today we're going to have a look at the London Fog. One of the new pens by Visconti, and I think one that was very eagerly anticipated. Now I was uh, I was looking online because I I knew there had to be some Sherlock Holmes quote on fog, uh, because if it's called London Fog, then there should be something should be some interesting quote. And of course there is one. I cannot live without brain work. What else is there to live for? Stand at the window here. Was ever such a dreary, dismal, unprofitable world? See how the yellow fog swirls down the street and drifts across the dun-coloured houses. What could be more hopelessly prosaic in material? What is the use of having powers, Doctor, when, no, when one has no field upon which to exert them? Crime is commonplace, existence is commonplace, and no qualities save those which are commonplace have any function upon Earth. Sherlock Holmes was a bit of a... I don't know. We would say bipolar, maybe. Slightly manic, depressed in there. Uh, he was actually talking about taking cocaine, by the way, there. So I'm not, I'm not encouraging that. I just want to have something with fog. But even better a quote, that was from the sign of four. This is from The Adventure of the Bruce Partington Plans. And this really, uh, uh, you know, applies to this pen. It was a nice equipment for a respectable citizen to carry through the dim, fog-draped streets. Now, there we go. The pen was lent to me by Applebaum, Applebaum Pennon. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. It's coming back to you. What's special about this pen? Well, it's the uh, fourth, you could say fifth, but I'm going to say fourth version of the Homo sapiens pen. So the fourth incarnation, the fourth finish of the Homo sapiens pen. Okay, I'm going to cover the past of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. But first, let's see how the Homo sapiens evolved. Okay, it started with this pen. This is the bronze version. There is also a steel version, that's why I said maybe five versions, which has steel trims, this has bronze trims. I love this pen, it's made of lava, uh, it's a very... Uh, it's a nice, nice, larger pen. It has a unique feel because of the material. Okay, so that was the 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 just the regular Homo sapiens, the bronze. Now we got the crystal. The crystal has blue, uh, tri has no, blue blue um, a material that's used has has a blue cap, and um, also very nice. Same model, but clearly very different material. Now we got the Florentine Hills. Florentine Hills is very similar. To the crystal but it has green colors and I was in Florence and if you stand on the tower of the Duomo you can look around and this this is the color of the surroundings there's a lot of, of green around it and that is what it looks like we have this and now we have the London fog and the London fog is clearly much more similar to these two than to the lava model grayish trims uh, and they have it so here's the pen okay I'm going to show you the box, and of course we can have a discussion about why it's called London Fog. There's also a drink called London Fog. It could be named after Fog in London, uh, something London's known for. It could also be because Visconti thought the name sounded cool and nothing else. Here we have the box. It's one of those big boxes. These are heavy. You have a cardboard outer sleeve, and then you get the, um, the actual wooden box out. Now, I've seen them in... Um, black and uh, I've seen them in uh, brown. Uh, this is almost like an extremely dark grey, so I wonder if they really did that on purpose. You know, fog, grey, etc. Uh, the box has a little bed for the pen, that's what it looks like when it's open and the bed is removed. Uh, there is, a, of course, a little uh, pen sleeve uh, and uh, there is the uh, little information booklet. Uh, very, very colourful. Uh, I've always enjoyed that one. Okay, closing that box. The pen. Let's cover the parts of the pen. So you can use the uh, Visconti My Pen system here. Uh, if you've never seen that, the little top thing, the finial, the Visconti logo comes off. It's magnetic, and you can put something else on there. For example, on this uh, the, the 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 blue the crystal model, we've put a little blue gemstone. So you can buy a bunch of uh, gemstones. You can buy zodiac signs. You can do all kinds of stuff to customize your pen, personalize it, which I enjoy. This is the material, um, very nice. 
I really like the material they used on the cap. It, uh, it, it really, it, it's a fog is, is not badly chosen. To me, this all also looks a lot like a waterfall or something. A lot of uh, foam and, and, and it's deep dark grey. I, I really like it. I have a center band. The center band says uh, Homo sapiens and it has a number on it uh, because it's limited edition to 888 pence. Um, and that clip, this is enamel. So they actually put enamel in those in the clips, their higher end pens, which I really enjoy. Looks very pretty. Clip mold after the modeled after the Ponte Vecchio is uh, spring loaded. I enjoy that. It's uh, very easy and practical to use. And here you have the the body. I, I've I've drained it uh, just so you can see how clear it is and uh, then very nice swirls. The end cap, the piston turning knob, has uh, that same material as the cap and just taking off it has yeah i should probably go into that now uh, the uh, section has that that uh, has a bayonet closure for the cap so the cap doesn't screw on it doesn't pop on you do a sort of half turn and it kind of clicks in place uh, nice system also means there is a little bit of spring to it and it's it's not so easy to accidentally pull off the uh, cap with this what i wanted to show you is that it's a power filler so given that it's empty you unscrew that bit, pull this out, put this in an ink bottle, compress that. You can do it a little slower, I'm, I'm doing it very fast now. Ink will be drawn up to about half of that. If you want to fill it completely, then you pull this thing out again. I like to hold it like this, and you put the piston back up again. Ink will rise, It'll, you'll see it flowing into the feed at some point, then you turn it over, put it back in the bottle, pop it again, close this, and then it should be completely full. But you can also just do one fill and leave it. it, it holds a large amount of ink. So even if you fill it once you should be writing for a bit. Section, same material as the cap and the per turning knob, again I think it's stunning. They, they, really, uh, they really picked a very very pretty material for this. And then on top of that is a number six palladium nib. This is the broad nib, uh, the feed. I've always enjoyed the shape of the feed that Visconti does. It's very elegant the way it's it's curved. I don't, I don't know if I've ever pointed that out but I, I really like it. And even the Visconti V is is uh, on top there on the um, section. So uh, Sorry, the feed. So I really like that. Okay, so broad nib. It says 23k PD950 for the, the content of the Palladium, Firenze for Florence where it's made and Visconti. Now, tell you what, this is a broad nib and I was blown away. Uh, if you've seen some a lot of my videos. You may know that recently I've had a lot of issues with Visconti nibs. The quality control seemed to be a bit dodgy. I've had a lot of issues with nibs being over polished, nibs skipping, hard starting, etc. That's a big deal, especially given these the, the price of these pens. They're not cheap. Um, but on this one, out of the box, perfect. Very, very pleased. And Yost did not just lend me this pen, he also lent me the, uh, the, the Van Gogh shoes. Same thing, wrote out of the box, medium nib, broad nib, the broader, the more um, uh, uh, prone they are to over polishing, skipping behavior, and honestly, perfect. So, uh, definitely uh, props to Visconti for, for getting this one right. I hope this is a sign of improved quality control and, and overcoming the nib issues, because it's a shame if, if you buy such an expensive pen, or any pen really, and it doesn't write. So, very good. It's a bigger pen. Uh, the uh, the Lava came in a medium and a maxi size. Some people call it the, the normal size and the oversize. It's it's bigger and uh, this is the same size. It's it's a larger pen. It's not huge, but it is a larger pen. It is a pen that you can post if you really want to. It looks a bit absurd and it gets very heavy. It doesn't post very deeply, but it works. Okay, uh, I think that, yes, that's all I need to cover. They have the pen. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, let's sit back for this one. And um, there's a lot of things about this pen that I really like. As you uh, you saw, I can pull out three other uh, uh, Homo sapiens, so it it should be clear from that that I really like the model. They're all different. They're all very nice, and I I think it's I think it's a great model larger without being super heavy. For example, the Opera Master models that I really love. Heavy celluloid, heavy, the, the filling mechanism itself is very heavy. They're really 
heavy pens, a lot of metal on them. This, I think, is more balanced. It's also large, but it's comfortable to use. So, I was really pleasantly surprised by seeing this, because I had seen pictures, I wasn't sure, but the way the material they picked, the way it catches the light, it's, it's very attractive. I also really like the blue swirls. Uh, they, they work very well. Uh, so, I like that, and I definitely, definitely like the way it writes. The fact that this nib wrote out of the box and wrote like a dream was fantastic. Now, here's the issue with that. Of course, every Visconti nib should write, but the problem is, when the Palladium nibs do write, I think they are fantastic. Super smooth, a little springy, just wonderful. But when they don't write, of course, it's a big frustration. So when you get one that does write, and again, I really hope this is a, a trend and this is something they are pulling through and are actually doing well. They, they, I hope that they've covered their nib issues. That's fantastic. And then you get a pen that writes like a dream. There's a reason I call this the Dream Touch nibs. Because they are superb, but they have to write. So let's all hope and pray to St. Nibius that this is, uh, you know, resolved. What do I not like so much about this pen? Well, one thing is the problem with materials like this, the swirls, is that no pen is like any other pen in the series. Uh, we happened to be at Ackermann in The Hague and they had, I think, four, four or five of them there. Uh, all London fogs and every pen is completely different but they're very inconsistent so for example there was one that had an enormous blue swirl that covered almost the entire barrel but there was another model that on one side had some blue swirls on the other side it was completely clear there wasn't a single swirl now you may ask yeah so what why does it matter well it matters because when you purchase a pen like this online you can't see it. You're not seeing your pen. You're seeing a production shot. Uh, you're seeing some product shot that Visconti released, or whatever. But you are not seeing the pen you will buy, unless you buy it on eBay and people have individual uh, uh, pictures. But usually, if you buy it from a larger supplier, you won't see that. So, the 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 problem with that is that you could get a pen that has beautiful swirls, and you could get a pen that has one little swirl here and the rest of the barrel is completely clear. There's no telling and I have seen that so I know those pens are out there. Is this a big deal? Not necessarily but as far as I'm concerned that is another reason to go to a brick and mortar store like Applebaum uh, where you can just go in, you can have a look, you can check out the pen, you can pick the pattern that you like best. Right? That's not a problem if you buy a Parker Urban because they're all exactly the same. But if you buy a pen like this that that, that has a pattern that you know depends on the material they use that could happen same thing with the cap some of these have a lot of this marbling uh, in there and some of them are basically just dark gray so that's all I'll say about that second issue the price 800 euros so you are not buying a cheap pen now you are buying a pen with a palladium nib you are buying a pen that is a limited edition 888 that's not an ultra limited edition of course but it is limited after producing 888 they're out there won't be any more but is it worth it well that's a very hard question to answer um, you know I have three so for me that would probably be worth it um, but I am absolutely convinced that there are people who would say that's absolutely not worth it no answering the question so highly subjective I do think you get a gorgeous pen and yes it's a limited edition you get a nice wooden box and all that so um, let, let's let's not uh, spend too much time on this very simply it's an expensive pen if it's an expensive pen with a stellar nib like this and it writes well no problem if it's not clearly an issue um, don't know what else to say about that apart from that I don't have any issues the pen is well made uh, tolerances. I've had some issues with Visconti tolerances recently. Tolerances in this are perfect. There is a, a gap under the uh, clip. It's clearly cut out. It's cleanly cut out. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. So, attention was good here. Eye to detail was good. That's all I have to say. What if you want one? Well, if you want one, 
go to my website, click the Apple Bone banner, and you'll get a 10% discount. All right, not just on this pen, on anything you buy, except for Mont Blanc. 10% discount, that's not bad. If you're in the if you are in the US, for example, you also don't pay 21% VAT that we pay. So that and 10% discount, I would say, makes this pen a lot more affordable and suddenly maybe a lot more interesting. So check it out if you're interested. Measurements of the pen will be on the website as well as high resolution pictures taken by Gourmet Pens. Uh, that's all there's to it. Yoast, thanks a lot for lending me this pen. I really appreciate it. It's a very pretty one. I'm going to do a writing sample. Hope this was useful so far. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Visconti. Homo sapiens. London Fog. The nib is a broad 23 karat palladium and the ink is a Visconti turquoise. Now, let's do some writing. This is under absolutely no pressure. As you can see, the pen performs very well. But of course, the question is, can it hold up when we try to do fast writing? I don't see any skips except for that one. So that's not at all bad. Okay, wetness. A dry-ish ink, but the nib definitely puts down quite a bit of it. Line variation. Well, first of all, interesting thing about this particular broad nib that it seems to be a little bit italic-like. You see the side strokes are narrower than the broad strokes, so that's interesting in itself. Line variation. Palladium nibs are not flex nibs, should not be treated as such, but you can definitely squeeze out quite a bit of line variation, which is uh, very neat. For those of you who enjoy such a thing, reverse writing is possible. As you also see the uh, sort of italic uh, nature of the nib there. It gets much drier. Uh, it's not particularly scratchy, but I wonder how long it, it keeps writing like this before it, it runs dry, you see? Okay, well, a kind thank you to Yoast from Applebaum Pennon. If you want yours, again, check out the discount code on my website. I hope this was useful. And um, I'll gladly see you later.